NX50.7 is out. Let me get you up to date. First some stats. We just hit 10k subscribers on our YouTube channel earlier this month and we're already heading towards 11k. And this is an incredible growth for us and kind of confirms our mission of providing good and high quality developer content. So if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the button, make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. NX plugins are immensely powerful because they can allow you to abstract and customize, but also automate your NX workspace. I'm not just talking about the plugins that we ship, but you can ship them as well. And so what we did in this release is to focus also on our existing documentation to make sure to go deeper on some of the aspects that include creating new plugins or publishing plugins also to them NPM registry. Zach from our team also went ahead and created a full in-depth blog post about how to create your own stack with the RPC and NX. And that involves creating a local plugin to generate a new TRPC setup, including the client and server parts, and also executors for properly building and serving that application. He was also on our live stream together with some TRPC core team members to build a to-do app with TRPC. So make sure to check those out as well. Next up, third class node support just landed in NX. Now, some of you that have been following us for a longer time know that we always had support for node backends. So you could always generate a new Express application or a Nest.js app that kind of served your API for your front-end application. And obviously in a monorepo scenario, which NX is kind of known for, this is a very neat integration because you can even share things among those different stacks. And so this really starts our effort into making the developer experience for our node backends on par with what we provide already for a lot of the front-end frameworks in NX. And so starting with 15.7, if you create a new NX workspace, you will now also see an option for setting up a standalone node server application that supports for now Express, Fastify, and Koa. And we are looking currently into also adding Nest.js and more. These setups come with new optimized generators Docker support, and obviously you can leverage all of the features that NX provides you also in the front-end frameworks. For instance, you can modularize your code base using local libraries. You obviously have the speed improvements that give you the effective commands and caching. You can also use NX Cloud in this setup, and it is much more coming, especially in the part of how you bundle and package them up with Docker. 15.7 also comes with improvements for our Angular community. So first of all, what we wanted to change is which version of Angular can be used with which version of NX. So previously we had a compatibility table which marked a major version of Angular and which major version of NX it needs to go together with. This is exactly the same thing that you also have when using the Angular CLI. So using Angular 14, you need to also use an Angular CLI version 14 and so on. Now, a lot of people have reached out though to us and wanted to use some of the new features that NX shipped, but were blocked by not being able to upgrade to the latest Angular version right now, or they had to delay that upgrade. And so that's why we wanted to kind of loosen that connection and make it so that you can install all the major LTS version of Angular with the latest NX version. So NX 15.7 now also supports Angular 14. And as you keep moving on, you will also be able to install previous versions. We're also excited about the new possibilities the standalone API from Angular provides in terms of making it more lightweight and flexible. And we already had generators that allowed you to create a new component using those standalone APIs. But starting with 15.7, we also allow you to bootstrap a completely new application without any ng module. In addition, there's also blog posts coming up from Column where he dives also deeper in some of the improvements we made to use NX plus NGRX using the Angular standalone APIs. So make sure you don't miss that one. Another feature we've been working on for quite a while, also because it's actually quite tricky, is proper log file parsing and pruning. So whenever you install your packages with npm, pmpm, or yarn, you will get a log file that defines the exact relationships among the different versions you have installed in your workspace. Now previously our NX graph, for instance, which has information about the npm packages a given project uses, just leveraged the package JSON. Now that NX has the capability of properly reading the log files for all the various packages for npm, pmpm, and yarn, as well as the different versions, we can now leverage that information and provide much more precise resolutions of the packages. This not only improves the NX graph, 
but it also tremendously helps with Docker file deployments. Imagine you build your application and package it up in a Docker container, which results in installing the package that you have. Now, having a package lock file there as well allows you to, first of all, prune all your dependencies to just have the necessary ones, so it speeds up your installation, but it also makes sure you have the exact precise versions as you have when developing locally. And this becomes even more important when you generate or package JSON files in an integrated Annex monorepo that uses a single version policy. You can enable this right now by using the generate lock file setting in your options for the build step, but we're also improving some Docker deployment scenarios where this will be the new default that will be generated going forward with upcoming versions. Make sure you follow us on Twitter and have a look on our blog as Mirror from our team is working on an upcoming blog post that goes in depth how the log file pruning and parsing works and in which scenarios it can be super useful. Finally, our friends over at Storybook shipped Storybook 7 beta support recently. And we obviously want to have that as soon as possible for our users. So right now you can generate a new Storybook 7 setup by passing the dash dash Storybook 7 beta configuration flag to your Storybook generator. There's also a migration guide on our docs that explains how to go and migrate your previous Storybook setup to the latest Storybook 7 version. Now this is still a beta version, so keep that in mind when you ship things into production, but the Storybook team actually has a Storybook day organized for March 14th, where they launch Storybook 7 officially and all the details that come with that. Our team member Katrina is there as well and will speak about how Storybook nicely integrates with NX. So that's for 15.7. Make sure to check out the description where we have the links to more details of all the things that I have mentioned now. We also have a bunch of standalone videos that go more into the details of all these different features. But we are already working on NX version. And so coming up there is Dino support in NX. There is improvements going to be shipped to NX console, including a new plugin developed by NX core members for IntelliJ users, where we collaborate with existing community members for the IntelliJ plugins. There is potentially Rust support for some of the parts of NX to speed up things. There is improvements going to be shipped to NestJS support, including some of the packaging options that we will have for our Node backend applications. And there will be NX for non-JS environments. So make sure, again, subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and have a look on our blog. See you in the next one.